A Sabo Yaba uh, Chief Magistrate Court in Lagos on Wednesday remanded a leader of Igbo community in Lagos State, SND with Frederick Nwajago, for allegedly threatening to bring the proscribed indigenous people of Biafra to the state. The Chief Magistrate Peter Nwaka ordered that the defendant, aged 67, be kept at the Koyi custodial facility for 30 days. He adjourned the case until May 3rd. Wajugus is being charged with conspiracy and breach of public peace. Earlier, the prosecutor, S.P. Thamos Nordin, told the court that Wajagu put fear on Lagos residents when he threatened to bring IPOP to the state. He submitted that Wajagu publicly said the IPOP would shut Lagos state for one month. Last you have uh, Daniel like uh, via Zoom and uh, Justice here with me in the studio. So, uh, let me come to you, uh, Mr. Lanka. Are you there? So the yes, SND board Frederick Wajago uh, has been charged with conspiracy and the breach of public peace. His bill was denied. Let's have your thought on this. Well, it, it's clear that his actions contravene the, um, the criminal law of Lagos State. See, um, there's a school of thought that uh, of the opinion that, oh, he was angry and um, he just said what he said. But um, you don't just, you know, you don't just say someone is angry. And you see, again, when you look at people and you look at the influence they carry, they have to be careful of whatever they say. Now, if you now make it, no matter how angry you are, if whether you mean it or not, you now make a statement of bringing iPod to Lagos. Now, iPod is not just anybody, it's not just a group. iPod is a group that has been proscribed by the federal government, by the same law of this land, have been proscribed as in to be seen as terrorist group. So you are saying that you want to bring in terrorist group to Lagos. That calls for alarm. So I think, uh, like I said earlier about court, you know, if court has not intervened to do that and to probably remind him and keep him somewhere for now, who knows what may happen within that time that he was saying that? Who knows whether it, well, his threats may be, may be real? Who knows what may happen? I think, it, well, it is for him to then go and convince the court to say, no, I did not mean that. This is what I was saying. This is my intention. It is not what has been, you know, but if he can prove that and the law is clear, about that, so if you come you for disturbing okay. public peace and creating All right. chaos, why do you think he was denied bail in this offense? Like, is are you saying that the offense is not bailable? No, it is bailable, but I, I wasn't in court, and um, I do not know what the prosecutor, what the charges are, and I do not know. You, no, sorry, sorry, we know what the charges. The charges are clear, and like I said, is a bailable offense. But then. If the prosecutor had been able to convince the court to say, look, this man, we do not think he should be, you know, given bail because such magnanimity of, of this offense is not something you can just treat trivially. Tri trivially. So maybe the court also needs to put up his own cap of reasoning. And the court needs also to put up his own cap of saving the people. So the best thing for the court, I think I will align with the decision of the court by keeping him somewhere. It's not as if he's unbelievable because by the time they come back to court on the 3rd of May, court may still, at that time, probably they would have looked at some, um, I mean, evidences before the court or some facts before the court and may be granted bail. But as it is, when it's, it's hot, I think it is better for us to, you know, turn it down. If you look at the case of the, the issue of uh, currency uh, um, um, tranches, when, the, 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 when it was really tough, when people started going to destroy banks and vandalizing things, court stepped in. Look at what right. the Supreme Court stepped Thank God that Supreme Court, said, you know, stepped in and to calm the whole situation. Things like this, you, you can never know how far, how bad it can go. So the best thing is for the court to right. come like to the prison cap and bring things to, 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 to the way it is now. I mean, we're almost out of time, but let me get your final shot on this. Elections are over, but there are a lot of people still aggrieved. They've gone to court, but how do you think we can, you know, 
uh, move on, you know, return the peace and um, um, everything come to the back okay, to the I, country. I, I think uh, the people that maybe <coughs> won or lost lost the election should uh, tone down the, on the rhetorics and the, the, the electorate too should be should be further sensitized and told the danger of hitting up the whole policy because. If it all burns down, the roof is coming down on everybody's head and it, it won't all go well for any, anybody. So whoever lost, we should learn to take uh, losses in, in stride in this uh, neck of the woods. We shouldn't all be sore losers or anybody that feels that, okay, they, maybe they lost the election. Should, they have proper channels. The courts are there. That's why Section 6 is there in our constitution to guarantee anybody uh, access to, to the judiciary to be able to seek whatever it is, whether their mandate or the mandate of anybody that they love back. All right, I've been speaking with two gentlemen, Justice Virginia, a lawyer here in the studio with me, also via Zoom online, Kat Daniels, a lawyer and public uh, analyst. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us it's my pleasure. on the show.